Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Temple to Ekate In Greek mythology, Hecate is a very unusual goddess. She is considered a chthonic deity, and she is the official Greek goddess of witchcraft and ghosts. She was depicted in ancient Greece as a woman with three different faces, or three identical women standing with their backs together. One of them holds keys, another holds a torch, and the last one holds a sword. The deity's ancient cult began worshipping her over 2,000 years ago. So, the exact nature of Ekate is extremely mysterious. All we really know is that she represented a darker side of life, and many of her dedicated followers sought mystical knowledge. The little that we do know about Ekate comes from her temple at Legina, located in modern Turkey which was originally inhabited during the Bronze Age. The Hellenistic people living in the city constructed a great sanctuary using tall columns, kind of like a stone circle. This huge open-air sanctuary was used for ceremonies involving the goddess Ekate 2,050 years ago. Her temple here is extremely important because nothing else like it has ever been found in the ancient world. Worshipping Ekate seemed to be more of a personal thing, and archaeologists have mainly uncovered small shrines dedicated to the goddess at crossroads and within the thresholds of people's homes. There weren't grand temples dedicated to Ekate like there were for Zeus or Poseidon. Lagina seems to be the only city where she was a civic deity, respected by everyone and worshipped on a massive scale. Number 9. Nesting Doll Pyramid in 2014, archaeologists discovered something shocking about the iconic Pyramid of El Castillo in Mexico. Oddly enough, this monumental pyramid is kind of like a Russian nesting doll. Researchers learned that within the pyramid is another pyramid, and within that one is a third pyramid. El Castillo Pyramid isn't as famous as the collapsed Maya Empire or many of the other sites throughout Mexico. It was likely constructed at the very end of Maya rule, around 950 AD. At least, this was when its outermost shell was created. Researchers believe these smaller pyramids tucked inside were most likely built many centuries earlier. It's been a bit frustrating because the only way to study these smaller pyramids within is by smashing the pyramid on the outside, which nobody is interested in doing. Researchers only learned about the nesting pyramids because they use electrical resistivity tomography, or ERT, to look through the outside casing. They also identified a sinkhole directly underneath the pyramid, something that could lead to an unknown underground lair. However, why the Maya created such a strange monument is still a total mystery. Number 8. Natural Nuclear Reactor there is a nuclear reactor in Africa that most people don't even know exists. It's special in the fact that it is 2 billion years old. And while that sounds like a conspiracy theory, it's 100% true. The reactor is natural, formed at a unique place in Gabon where you can find naturally occurring uranium inside the Earth's crust. Uranium, as you likely know already, is extremely radioactive. The natural conditions here are just right to create nuclear reactions without the need for human intervention. The first human-made nuclear reactor didn't produce electricity until 1951, and even then, it only produced a small amount of energy. However, two billion years ago, a pile of rocks accomplished something that took humans thousands of years to figure out. The natural reactor was found by French scientists in 1972 when they were taking uranium ore out of a mine in Gabon. They were shocked to see that the uranium-235 was already in the process of nuclear fission. Uranium-235 naturally decays into thorium before producing a neutron. This neutron is then attracted to the closest uranium-235 atom, which begins the fission process. Nuclear fission is nothing more than atoms breaking apart into smaller atoms and releasing energy. This was already occurring naturally in the mine in Gabon because groundwater was trickling into the cavern, acting as a regulating substance that fueled the nuclear fission process. As atoms began to break apart and create neutrons, the water would slow down the neutrons' movement. 
The energy produced in this process would eventually heat up the water as well. Over time, the groundwater would get so hot that it would begin to boil off. Then, once all the water was boiled away, more groundwater would trickle into the mine, starting the process over again. It was never enough to create any significant energy, but it's still a fascinating ancient place that proves just how amazing the raw power of our planet is. And now for number 7, but first, it's shout out time! I want to say a big thank you to Ali Everett and MabaWitch23 for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries and mysterious history. Number 7. The Hill of the Pharaohs The ancient city of Bhutto, also called Tel El Farain, or the Hill of the Pharaohs in English, is located in Egypt. This mysterious city is east of Alexandria at the lip of the Nile Delta, and it was a very important place to the ancient Egyptians. They dedicated the city to the goddess Wadjet, one of the oldest of all the Egyptian deities. Wadjet, sometimes referred to as Bhutto, was the original local goddess of pre-dynastic Egypt. She was worshipped by the people of Lower Egypt before the unification of the country took place over 4,500 years ago. Then, when Lower and Upper Egypt fused together, Wadjet became the official goddess of the kingdom. The city of Bhutto was named in her honor and was the epicenter for cult worship of Wadjet during the Second Dynasty, which began in 2890 BC. Worship of the goddess likely continued for another 2,000 years, until ancient Egypt fell to Alexander the Great in 332 BC. The reason we call this place the Hill of the Pharaohs is for the sheer number of temples that decorate the area, which spans about 11 acres. The whole place is dotted with the ruins of temples and palaces, as well as stone fragments from broken pillars. You can also find the remains of meeting halls whose ceilings were once propped up by gigantic columns. This was where the Egyptians came to offer sacrifices to the goddess Wadjet. It was a thriving religious sanctuary that is now being reclaimed by the desert. Number 6. Cave of Letters The Cave of Letters, likely one of the most important places for ancient Jewish history, was rediscovered in the 1960s about 25 miles from Qumran in the Judean desert. Qumran is the region where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found tucked away in caves and grottos. The Cave of Letters didn't contain an entire history of religious scripture like the Qumran Caves, but it was still impressive for its revelations on everyday life in ancient Israel. The unassuming cave naturally carved into the face of a cliff was basically a time capsule. Researchers uncovered documents and multiple sets of clothing worn by Jewish people in the 1st and 2nd centuries AD. The hunt for the cave started when archaeologist Yigael Yadin learned of a mysterious cavern where letters had been found, written by the famous ancient Jewish revolt leader, Simon Bar Kokhba. But these treasures had been looted and sold on the black market, and so Yigael went in search of more caves hoping to find something that hadn't already been pillaged. He found what he was looking for up a sheer rock face that was 50 feet off the ground, somewhere that's impossible to reach unless you have proper climbing equipment. Question is, how did the ancient people get up there? Within this mystery cave, he discovered letters and human remains. He also found ancient clothing, a pair of children's sandals, and household items. The letters were written by various people. One of the documents was drafted in Greek by a man named Sumaios, who researchers say was Nabataean. The letter explains that Sumaios was concerned about food issues during the Third Jewish Revolt against Rome. This was when the Jewish people tried to free themselves of their Roman oppressors. What's interesting about the letter is that it seems to show that not only Jewish people were involved in the revolt, and that other cultures the Romans had subjugated rose up to fight as well. Number 5. Muziris In 3000 BC, civilizations around the Mediterranean and in the Middle East were busy trying to conquer the world. One of the ways to do this was through trade, and spices were among the most coveted items in the ancient world. And so, 5000 years ago, the Babylonians, Assyrians, and Egyptians arrived on the Malabar coast hoping to find some spices. 
They were later joined by the Arabs and Phoenicians, and gradually the city of Muziris was born. The Malabar coast is on the southwestern shore of the Indian subcontinent. Ancient people would have needed to travel a significant distance along the coast of India to reach this place. And although it was quite a distance, it wasn't as difficult as you may think. They did have boats, and it wasn't hard for these advanced civilizations to move along shorelines. Muziris soon became a key port, moving products from India to Persia, North Africa, Greece, Rome, and other places in the Mediterranean region. Famous Roman historian Pliny the Elder described it as the first emporium of India. He claimed Muziris was responsible for the exportation of pearls, Chinese silk, black pepper spice, tortoiseshells, gold coins, textiles, and so many other items. Traders with seaworthy vessels could move straight from Muziris across the ocean, along the southern coast of Arabia, and up the Red Sea to the city of Cairo. These days, the city is a miserable ruin. Something mysterious happened that caused Muziris to be abandoned in 1341. Scientists believe it was a flood that washed most of the city into the ocean. Number 4. Mystery Maya Town A team of archaeologists working with the National Institute of Anthropology and History in Mexico recently made a shocking discovery. They uncovered evidence of the ancient Maya town of Oshkutskab, a lost village that most people have likely never heard of before. This was a town located in what we now know as the Mexican state of Yucatan at least 1,000 years ago. After the fall of Mayapan in the 1440s, it became a regional capital. It was then occupied by the Spanish, who turned it into a colonial town in 1550. The Spanish built their Franciscan churches over the ruins of Maya temples that were destroyed. Within a century, almost nothing of the original Maya town remained. This is why it was such a big shock when archaeologists found evidence of the original structures underneath the modern city. They discovered this while they were excavating the Central Park. They found old ceramics, fragments of bone, and pieces of crumbling architecture from 1,000 years ago. The true city of Oshkutskab is currently buried under two layers of history. Below, a modern 21st century city that was constructed on top of a colonial Spanish town. Number 3. The Oldest Church in the World The oldest church in the world is 1,789 years old as of 2022. It's located in Syria, at the archaeological site of Dura Europos. You might expect the oldest Christian church in existence to be closer to the Vatican, but instead, it's in the middle of a barren patch of dusty wasteland hundreds of miles away. The church at Dura Europos was originally built as a house in 229, but it was then converted into a chapel somewhere between 233 and 256 AD. There isn't much left of it except some crumbling sandstone walls. Even if you were to stand in the very center of the demolished structure, you would never think for a second you were in the oldest church in the world. But when scientists excavated it in the early 20th century, they found evidence of religious activities. They uncovered scrolls with prayers dating back to the 1st century AD, and they identified frescoes in an area used strictly for baptisms. These frescoes are still considered to be some of the oldest Christian images found anywhere on the planet. They depict scenes from the Gospels, such as the healing of the paralytic, Christ walking on water, and the Samaritan woman at the well. Number 2. Nagarjuna Khanda Nagarjuna Khanda is an island in India, but at one point in time, it was also a city. It's one of the most important Buddhist sites in the country, and yet not too many people have ever heard of it. This ancient city is not in your typical guidebook for Indian travel. One of the main reasons for this is that the construction of the Nagarjuna Sagar Dam left the archaeological site flooded. One of the most important Buddhist sites in the world was suddenly underwater, and the ruins had to be relocated to higher land, which later became an island. This was a very different landscape 2,000 years ago. There was a Buddhist monastic university that attracted students from as far away as China, and people from all over India, Bengal, and even Sri Lanka used to travel here in order to get spiritual guidance. 
A lot of treasure has been discovered at this site throughout years of excavations. Buddhist and Hindu ruins have been identified, but that's fairly normal for a site in India. What's really caught the attention of archaeologists was when they found Roman artifacts. Researchers came across coins from between 16 and 141 AD, proving there was a connection between southern India and the Roman Empire. Number 1. The Iseum The Iseum is an ancient Roman temple built in the 2nd century AD, dedicated to an Egyptian goddess called Isis. It was excavated in the 1950s, but by then, it was nothing more than a pile of rubble. This prompted archaeologists to do something extreme, and they decided to completely reconstruct the site. Through a painstaking process, they put the ancient temple back together piece by piece. It's currently in the exact same state as it was 1,800 years ago, only it's no longer in Rome. The temple hasn't moved, but the name of the land has changed to Hungary. The experts finished the Iseum in 2012, complete with the eerily beautiful shrine to Isis, a garden, and the sanctuary of Mercurius. It really does feel like you're walking back in time to when the Romans celebrated the Egyptian gods themselves. As for the history of the Iseum, it was constructed in the first part of the second century, just outside the walls of the city. It was used as a shrine to Isis for about 200 years, until it was suddenly pulled down and broken apart. The people then used its stones in the construction of other buildings, and the site was turned into a cemetery. Thanks for watching! Which of these amazing ancient places would you like to visit? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already! See you next time! Bye!